The Q4 earnings season is underway, although still in the relatively early going. Will these reports even matter to the relentlessly rising U.S. and global stock markets? Well, our chief equity strategist and economist John Blank has that answer for us. John, what say you about that? Yeah, Terry, I'm I'm of the mind that the Fed repo buying, short-term repo buying, um, it don't bother with the, the debate right now whether it's quantitative easy or not. What it is is free money to day traders at institutional traders on Wall Street, and they are day trading the stock market higher and getting out at a very low risk basis one day after the other, stringing this together into a run for for stocks that's now at 10% since this thing started, probably got at least 5 or 10% more to go before it plays out. Stock prices have become expensive relative to their earnings. The market bulls said uh, that, and they're still saying, that earnings are going to catch up to the price. If they don't, does that concern you? Oh, absolutely. It should concern everybody who's an uh, investor, not a trader. Um, This thing can roll over, and when it does, it can take the stock market down 10 to 20% within a few weeks, if not, you know, in a few days. So, um... Yeah, to get back to S&P 500, 3,000 on a market like this would be no problem. The usual rule in overbought markets, though, is uh, any corporate earnings weakness is severely punished. Is that going to still play out this time? Well, it's interesting, Terry. Uh, not really, because of the repo buying. I, I, I'm, I've been surprised so far that there really hasn't been a lot of punishing of stocks. But we're still going the early going of that. But uh, there is actually not as much evidence as you like to believe in that, and that tells you that people are overlooking the bad news, which is still uh, a part of this euphoria. As we move forward, the John, will the markets continue to shrug off the Trump impeachment trial? Uh, yes, I think so. I think this is the consensus, and when it's all priced in that uh, you know he will get acquitted, um, there really is no new news to to the market to trade on, and that's just from a pure market perspective. I would imagine, unless something that, that is outside that consensus happens, um, we should assume the market will pay no attention to it. On the global scene, the fiftieth Davos World Economic Forum. Uh, is in progress, may be wrapping up soon. The theme this year, Stakeholders for a Cohesive and Sustainable World, whatever that means. Has there been anything noteworthy there? Uh, I would say no. I mean, one of the things I've watched, you know, is it's getting to be a crowd that already has spoken to one another in the media uh, throughout the year who then re- revisit the whole same set of themes in Davos. Um and I think, you know, there's another sub-tier of economists and other people who do go there, I've, I've noticed. And there really is a lot of substance to the dialogue in these classrooms that are effectively held there. But this stuff is esoteric from a stock market perspective. And uh, and what you get out of the media is the same folks that you saw basically in New York anyway. So I frankly think it's, 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 it's a non-starter for the market. What's your outlook for the global economy? Global economy is flat. It is showing signs of bottoming, but it is certainly not uh, clear that the bottom is in, and people should retain a skepticism about it. Uh, I think, you know, the phase one trade deal with the United States was mainly about fixing tariffs, not getting rid of them, and that should be the model going forward. If we had gotten rid of some tariffs, that might have spooked, sparked some growth, but since we didn't get rid of any, uh, we're, we're basically in a, in a stat, flatline situation from that perspective, and I think that's the one that people should be banking on. And there's also been a good deal of central bank palaver this week. Uh, what do you make of that? Uh, Christine Lagarde showed up that she can listen to a bunch of economists at the ECB. It was, it was her response today on Thursday. We're talking Thursday was... Uh, completely boring and nothing to be said other than she's going to stick with Draghi's plan, which is what any any newbie central banker will do is just stick with the program. She's not been there long enough to be strong enough, and she's frankly not an economist, so she's she's going to be very pliable for you know the bureaucrats to run the place anyway, so I would expect nothing new from her, and that means accommodation, by the way. It doesn't mean restriction. Stocks you're paying attention to right now include Delta Airlines, Credit Suisse, and microchip technology. Yeah, Delta Airlines, great stock from Mars perspective. Zach's number one rank, uh, Zach's value score of A, Zach's growth score of A, and Zach's momentum score of A. So you, you simply cannot 
uh, not look into the stock. It's a forward P of 8.2. The coronavirus takes the stock down a little bit from about 62 to 60. You might want to watch it for an entry point, but this is a great stock. Credit Swiss? Credit Swiss, this is ticker CS. It's a much cheaper stock than you might imagine. I mean, it's amazing when we get to microchip how different banks are versus uh, chip companies. Ticker CS is trading at 13 and a half times, 13 and a half dollars a piece, which is just nothing. The forward PE is eight and a half. I like its chart right now, Terry. It's it's moving up in a nice, uh, you know, strong buying pattern. And this is a great stock because it's not overpriced, and it, and it might have some run here. So you might want to look into that one. The third one. Microchip Technologies, MCHP. Here is where I get concerned that the market does it. 110 bucks a share. Value score is only C on that, which is a forward P of 20, which is frankly pretty good for a chip company, but the growth score is D. And this is the problem. The chip, the chip buying is all betting on a turn. We already talked about the global economy being flat, and that's tied to these chip buying things, which are the most global of, of, of uh, goods. And so I think the market's way ahead of itself on these on the buying of the chips, but the market doesn't listen to me. But I would think from a anything but a short-term momentum trader would stay away from this stock right now. It's not worth buying. Well, that's the latest with our chief equity strategist and economist, John Blank. And with John, I'm Terry Ruffalo. And by the way, you can get advance notice of positive earnings surprises. Zach's research breakthrough now predicting with near 80% precision which stocks are going to be beating earnings expectations even before their reports are released. And that has led to double-digit gains in less than one week. See the stocks that it's picking right now by visiting zax.com slash promo for details. This material is being provided for informational purposes only, and nothing herein constitutes investment, legal, accounting, or tax advice, or a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold a security. Do not act or rely upon the information and advice given in this podcast without seeking the services of competent and professional legal, tax, or accounting counsel. Publication and distribution of this podcast is not intended to create, and the information contained herein does not constitute an attorney-client relationship. No recommendation or advice is being given as to whether any investment or strategy is suitable for a particular investor. It should not be assumed that any investments in securities, companies, sectors, or markets identified and described were or will be profitable. All information is current as of the date herein and is subject to change without notice. Any views or opinions expressed may not reflect those of Zach's investment research as a whole.